It's Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures, and it's our two o'clock session. We are going to be talking a little bit today about our iPhone iPad cameras, and especially the HDR function. It's a pretty handy dandy uh, function that allows us to really um, take better pictures. Uh, it helps with things like exposure, lightness and darkness. So let's get started. You really ought to have your iPhones and iPads handy so you can follow along and um, try things out as we go from slide to slide. So I'm going to count to 20 in my head and give you time to grab that phone or that iPad. Boy, 20 seconds can seem like a long time. I think I'm going to cut it a little short. So hopefully you have your uh, device with you. And uh, if you would open it to your camera, app will continue. So HDR, first of all, what does it stand for? Well, it stands for High Dynamic Range. Evidently, this is the amount of light or the range of light the human eye or a camera sensor in our lenses can pick up. And uh, on our Apple products, when you have HDR on, this is what happens. You point and focus and you tap the shutter. But actually, the app is taking three pictures. It's taking one that's underexposed, one that's overexposed, and then the original, the one in the middle. Then its amazing software combines the best features of those three pictures into one image. The result is when we are shooting uh, where there are shadows or bright lights, uh, it adds to more details. It brings those details to life. So again, it's important to remember that it's taking three pictures, uh, underexposed, overexposed, and your original. And it combines uh, the pictures into one image. And it's better for light and detail. So that's something to think about. Now. I stepped away because I heard a text and I was afraid it was either Ed or uh, Chris telling me that um, they couldn't hear me or they couldn't see it or something, but doesn't seem to be the case, so let's go on. So when do you use, when do we use HDR? Well, here are a couple of good examples. First is sunsets. It can uh, ensure, when you have HDR on, it can ensure that the land is not just a dark blob. Uh, it can bring out some detail. The same with landscape. It also helps to bring out detail and uh, make sure that the picture is as sharp as possible. The second one, bright sunny days when you're taking portraits. This is really uh, very important. You know when you're taking uh, pictures of, uh, oh, maybe your grandchildren or a family picture and it's in the sun, you're thinking, well, there shouldn't be any problems. But when you look at the image, there are shadows on the faces. Well, if you turn HDR on, it will minimize those shadows. It will also eliminate shiny spots on the skin where the sun's reflecting. So that's a time to remember, oh, should I make sure HDR is on? The other is when you're in a low light or backlight situation, it will lighten up some of the details. So if you have to take um, a, a photo of something against a window where the light is coming in from behind, it can, uh, again, bring out more details. So 
when I talk about HDR, where do you find it? Now, I can only show you images from my iPhone and my, cam uh, my iPad camera. However, different models, the HDR sometimes looks and works in slightly different ways. But I think you'll be able to figure it out. So if you look at these pictures, uh, don't look at the pictures. They're not particularly grand. Um, but you notice that HDR is at the top. And on the left picture, it is underlined. And that's when I just turn my app on, and there it is. Now, if I tap on HDR, what I get is the picture on the right, which is telling me that HDR is going to go on automatic. The software is going to decide when to uh, use it if I tap that auto. Now, on my iPad screen, it looks a little differently. You see it's not at the top. On my particular iPad, because in this case I have it in landscape, uh, it's over on the right. And you will notice that there is a line through it. Well, that means that I've got HDR turned off. If I wanted to turn it on, I would just tap it. If I turned my screen the other way, then the uh, HDR, at least on my iPad, is still in the same location. So you need to, excuse me, you need to look at your devices and um, see where the HDR is. Now, well, what about this automatic stuff? What, what do we, how do we control that? Well. What you need to do is you need to go to settings. And once you get to settings, scroll down to where you see camera and tap on that. And I'll just take a breath here and uh, allow you to get there. And again, it depends which of the phones you have. Now, the picture you're seeing on the screen, I have an iPhone 10. And this is what it looks like. Uh, other people uh, with different cameras, it may look slightly different. So you have to read the small print. OK, so if you look down where the red arrow is, you will see on my particular phone, I have two choices. I have auto HDR, and I can turn that on, which means I'm saying to the software, uh, I'm going to trust that you will use HDR, high dynamic range, when it is most appropriate. I uh, see I don't have it on. And I'm choosing to be able to uh, set that function myself by tapping it uh, back on my screen. Whoops, the wrong one way. So I'm, I'm, leaving it for myself that when I tap that HDR that I will be in charge. Again, if I top, tap the auto or if I set the auto HDR here, then I don't have to think about it and it will automatically um, use it when appropriate. This is a personal decision. What I urge you to do is play around. You know, if you're going on vacation, one day Turn on the auto HDR, and then when you look at the images at the end of the day, are you happy with them? Uh, if you're not, the next day, uh, turn it off and then make the decision when you will use the HDR. And then look at those images. And which, which group are you most happy with? You will notice that the second choice says keep normal photo. So let's look at the, the small print below. It says HDR blends the best parts of three separate exposures into a single photo. Save the normally exposed photo in addition to the HDR vision, version. In other words, if you turn that on, you're going to save two images. Now, this becomes important when you start getting messages that says uh, your memory is full or you're running out of room. So again, you need to make a personal decision. If you're someone who's taking hundreds of pictures over a month's time, then you may not want to keep that normal picture. 
if you're a professional photographer, you may want to keep it so that you can look at the two choices and decide which one you like best or do some editing in the Photos app. It really is a personal choice. What you just need to remember is if you have it turned on, you will be saving two pictures instead of one. Now, on my iPad, entirely different situation. In this case, I don't have the option to uh, put HDR on uh, automatic. I have to make that decision each time. And this is a fairly new uh, iPad. Yours may even say something different, but I still have to make that choice about uh, keeping the normal photo. Do I want to keep the two pictures, the one that is the combined of the three, the overexposure, the underexposure, and the normal photo, and plus the original, or do I just want to keep the picture that the software says is the best of the three separate exposures combined? Again, if you have any questions about HDR, please uh, put them in the uh, comment column. And uh, I can't see, when I'm using uh, share screen, I can't see the comments. Uh, but I'll certainly look at them afterwards. And Chris and Ed are also monitoring, monitoring uh, this Facebook Live, and they probably can answer the question also. So again, you have choices about using and how you use HDR, and you control that by going to your settings on your phone and on your iPad. Uh, you have to make that decision every time you make a picture, take a picture. All right, so let's look at some examples. So these are, these are pictures from my garden. You can see that it is um, exactly the same location. And it is a fairly shady background uh, with the sun hitting the flowers in the foreground. So if you look at the picture on the right where HDR is off, you will notice that the color in the daylily is washed right out. Uh, you will also notice that uh, some of the uh, foliage in the for real foreground is also washed out. So when 10 seconds later I took another picture with HDR on, you can see that the yellow of the uh, daylily is very vib vibrant. And the foliage is uh, the different colors. Variegated is more defined. Also, the hosta in the background is brighter on the one on the left as opposed to the one on the, the right. So in that case, it made a real difference, in my opinion. And this is what would happen with if I was using people instead of plants. Uh, if I had it off, I might get reflections off their face, or they may show up in shadow and not to be as detailed. If I turn it on, uh, the colors are going to be more true, and the details are going to uh, be more obvious. Here's another one. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Freeport may recognize this, Freeport, Maine, may recognize this as Winslow Park. I was out for a day, and I was just playing around. And uh, on the right, you will see, uh, once again, I had HDR off. And on the right, um, it's on. Now, on the right, things are brighter. Um, I don't think the, the uh, water is as, um, the contrast is as good on the water on the one on the right. So take a look at it and think about which one do you prefer. I really like the one on the left better. And so what I would what I comes back to advice is the wonderful thing about digital photography, you've got time to play around and you can look at the image and if you don't like it you can trash it. So if you're taking pictures, uh, try someplace uh, with it HDR on and with it off and uh, see what which one you like. You really have some choices here and if you've got the time to play around um, that's good. 
Here's another. This is um, River Walk in Lisbon Falls. Again, you see the one on the right, it's off. The one on the uh, left, HDR, is on. You can see some of the difference in the colors. Uh, the one it's off, I prefer the one when it's off. I think the colors are more vibrant. Uh, but once again, somebody else might care for the one on the, uh, the right, uh, depending on uh, shadows, etc., and how the, the foliage and the foreground looks. So again, you have options. Uh, you can play around, take it with it on, take it with it off. And again, if you put it on automatic, you just have to go into settings and turn that button off and then you can take control of whether or not you're using HDR. When shouldn't you use in, uh, HDR? Well, evidently, you shouldn't, we shouldn't use it if we're uh, taking pictures that have motion in them. For example, if we are at a soccer game trying to get a picture of the granddaughter uh, making a great shot, uh, it can, uh, your image can end up with ghost images. If you want the contrast, like I did in two of those landscape pictures, then you don't want to use the HDR. Evidently, vivid colors are also um, an issue. HDR may wash them out. And again, that's why it makes sense to take a picture with HDR on and one with it off, and you can decide which you like best. The other is you can't use it when uh, you're using a flash. Uh, it's one or the other. So those are four times when you need to make some decisions about whether or not you're going to use HDR. A couple of things uh, to think about. It does take longer to take a picture because you're taking th when you have HDR on, you are taking three pictures. Uh, now, I can't tell the difference. Uh, however, if holding the picture, uh, holding the camera really still is an issue, then you might want to think about using tripods or uh, taking the uh, picture with the volume button, something that's easier than trying to hit the shutter. Uh, and if you're wondering what I mean by the taking the picture with the volume button, if you look at, um, scroll down till uh, the video I did on Tuesday, you will see um, some ways that you can um, trip the shutter without using the shutter button. And the other thing is if you have, as I mentioned before, if you leave the option of on of uh, keeping the, the regular picture you take, then you are using more storage. And that becomes an issue if you use, if you're taking a lot of pictures. I mentioned flash, so I'll just uh, put this up very quickly. Uh, when and to use and when not to use flash. Daylight images. Uh, again, if you're taking pictures of people and you want to get rid of shadows or like the plants, you might try it with a flash instead of HDR. Again, seeing which picture you like best. Remember, the flash only works up close and personal within six feet doesn't do you any good to try to take a picture of somebody um, on a field or uh, on a, a, a platform or a um, band venue uh, when you're way up in the bleachers. The flash isn't going to do any good at all except light up the bald head in front of you. Uh, again, the experts all suggest that you experiment with HDR instead of flash. Um, again, the wonderful thing about these, these digital cameras, you can simply, we can simply delete or trash those pictures we're not happy with. Again, remember the flash is useless in the big events and uh, when we're near glass, because all we get is a reflection coming back of funny lights, funny balls uh, in the middle of our image, whether we're taking against a window or a mirror or something like that. So, in closing, I just want to go over a couple things to remember. The best use of HDR, 
sunsets and landscapes. You're looking at a picture of um, across the Zambezi River in uh, Zimbabwe on one side, in Zambia on the other. True African sunset. Uh, on bright sunny days, you might want to use HDR to minimize the shadows on faces and get rid of those shiny spots that sometimes show up on the skin. Or again, in the example I use with plants, and when you have low light or backlit situations. So that's what HDR is all about. It's a very handy function for uh, our cameras. It's really pretty amazing when you think of the software that is uh, within our little devices. And uh, again, if you have questions, please leave them in the um, comments. Or if you'd like to share a picture or two that you've taken with HDR, either HDR on, HDR off, and comment what your experiences is, that would be great because all of us are smarter than just any one one of us. So that's it for today. Hope you have a great rest of the afternoon. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, which means Chef Toy will be back when I'm not sure what he's cooking up tomorrow, but I'm sure it'll be yummy. So thanks for stopping by. You're going to see me escape out of this and then uh, sign off. Uh, have a great day.